because the world still has a lot of problems and some of these problems have been with us for millennia. If we are going to make an impact, we need to really think differently about it. We need to improve our capacity to innovate, to come up with new ideas, to put those ideas into practice uh, and build our skills uh, to do so over the course of our careers. When we do social innovation trainings, they are based on what we call the Amani Social Innovation Framework or the as if. The Amani Social Innovation Framework has eight steps. So the first step, we call it burning. Burning means really tapping into your own personal motivation for addressing a social challenge. Because social change work is quite difficult and takes a long time, it's really important for you to understand why you're doing it, what is your true purpose here, what's your passion, and how do you bring that to bear to look at the problem that you're solving, because otherwise you won't last the distance. In order to tap into that passion uh, for why you're doing this work, we work with organizations, not just as a team together, but also as individuals to see how they relate to the particular issue that we are working on. So what is, as an individual, what is your own personal relationship to it? Once you know what your burning is, your, your motivation or the why you want to do this work, now we start to look at, well, what exactly is the challenge or what exactly is the problem that you're seeking to solve? We borrow from design thinking uh, the concept of sensing, which is using all of the senses and taking a really big picture view to go into the problem. Sometimes it's not even about problem solving, but it's called problem finding. So what, what is truly the problem that you're trying to solve and is this actually the problem you were given or is there another underlying uh, problem that you have to address? Now I'm saying problem a lot, but it could also be an underlying opportunity. Another really important uh, step in the process is what we call questioning. Asking questions is really important and, and, and learning how to ask questions or what are the right types of questions to ask, whether those are questions to describe the world, um, so what is questions, or to change the world, what if questions, uh, and, and how to get better at asking these questions and practicing uh, doing so. In that process of asking questions, you sometimes realize that, you know, going back to what I said about problem finding, that it's not the problem you were given is not always the problem that you have to solve. So it becomes important also to reframe the question, to come up with a totally different question uh, than the one you were given as the key to where the answer or the innovation might lie. Now that you have a lot of data from sensing and you've gotten some practice asking a lot of different questions and applying those questions onto the data, the next step is what we call associating. And now associating, unlike sensing or questioning, associating is uh, less of an action than more a cognitive skill, something that in your head you're now starting to put together different ideas from different places. So taking things that might be totally different and finding a common theme, a common pattern between them. So now we have a lot of information, we have a lot of data in front of us from the sensing process and the questioning and the associating. Now we start a process of putting it all together. So taking all this information, generating insights from it, and from those insights, coming up with ideas. So a set of new hypotheses or new ideas that we, can, that we have a hunch that this is where the innovation may lie, or this is where the answer to the, the new question that we are addressing may be found. So now you have a, a one or maybe more ideas. We start to open up again. So if the last bit was in a phrase of narrowing in, we now start to open up again and, and take these ideas out into the world, talk to different types of people, talk to people that are again experts in what you're doing, but also people who may be uh, slightly unrelated uh, to it, but may have a perspective or a point of view on what you're doing. We call this process idea networking. Uh, so it's a networking not for uh, resources like funding or jobs, but actually to see if we put the idea in the center, how do different people react to that? And how do different people bring their work and their opinions to bear onto your idea? And in that process, new insights come out for you in terms of um, refining the idea further and seeing how it may apply in the real world. The next step is what we call experimenting, but experimenting goes also by other names, for example, prototyping. So what this means is to build now a model for the idea that you have. What could that idea look like in real life? Do you build a physical model of it 
or do you uh, do a storyboard that maps out the journey of somebody who is experiencing your product or your service? How do you bring that out into the world? What, what, how does the world react to it? What feedback can you get? Um, it's really helpful for people if they have something very tangible to look at and give feedback. So rather than spending a lot of time perfecting the research and the design, uh, it's much better sometimes to, to do a rough version of it out there and let people react to it. And, and that helps you decide what to keep and what to improve on. The next step is what we call impacting, which is now since we're talking about social impact, it's really important that your product or your idea not just be something that the world uh, takes up, but also something that makes it a better world, that, that leads to a social impact. So you need to think carefully about how will this idea impact the, the user or the customer or the beneficiary uh, in, in one year from now or in five years from now. What is truly going to be the impact of this idea? and uh, how will that change over time and how will you make it sustainable uh, over time. The last step is what we call navigating. How do you make your idea work in an organization or start something new as, a, as an institution to house your idea? Just having an idea isn't enough. Oftentimes you've got to make that idea work within an institution and you've got to navigate the, the way the institution works, its strategic priorities, its funding realities, its history and culture in order to make your idea find a home within an institution and be able to be adopted by that institution.